Hello and welcome to The Skiing Show. I'm Todd Nelson and this is the show that always ends up going off piste. Now we have an amazing show lined up again today of course, but first please do like, subscribe, comment, all of those things. It really helps us out to understand what you like and, well, what you don't. Anyway, let's move on. What's on this episode? Well, we've got Snow Around the World in 80 seconds, of course. We're going to talk to Al Morgan about the best all-mountain ski boots. And then we've got Jerry of the Day and Send of the Day. So action packed. Now, let's get started on Snow Around the World in 80 seconds. Sam, please chuck a timer on, please, mate. Thank you. And let's go. It's been a great week of snowfall in Europe and in the Pyrenees, the Alps, and there's more to come. Um, starting in Austria, Obergogel and Obertown are the latest resorts that are looking to be open, and Hintertux has currently got the most terrain in the world open, 22 miles. Um, unfortunately, the Lesch Zurs uh, event got cancelled last week uh, because of warm weather, so that's another World Cup done, but is this a question that we should maybe be moving um, the schedule uh, a little bit later. Anyway, Levy is coming up this weekend, uh, so that's really exciting, and it is really, really bloody cold there. Anyway, in Switzerland, Zermatt, Sasfe, and Engelberg are open, and possibly Kranz Montana and the Matt have said that they will be delaying by a fortnight. For the first time in 50 years, not a resort in France has opened yet. Um, the problem was the warmth again and rain, blah, blah, blah. Teen have delayed their opening. Valtorena are apparently opening, uh, I think, either this weekend or next weekend, depending on when you watch this. Uh, Teen haven't set a date, but they're the two that normally open first. Um, now, but like I said, lots of snow coming this weekend in the next seven days, so it is looking really, really good. Um, heading over the pond to North America, California got its first, first snowfall a few days ago, weeks ago maybe. Uh, in the western US, there's been snowfall everywhere, up to three feet in some resorts. Mammoth opening a week early, uh, Vail are opening. Um, it's all looking really, really good. Uh, Canada is also up and running. Sunshine near Banff. Uh, they announced they were opening earlier than expected. Lake Louise has a World Cup coming at the end of this month. So um, they are looking really good. They are opening. It's all go. And it's getting cold everywhere. So snow making is on the up. So we can all go shredding. Thank you. So ski boots have always been a bit of a pain in the arse. They've been heavy, you know, they're a little bit uncomfortable. Nowadays, though, the companies have made them lighter. Technology has come in to make them moldable. Now they are truly very, very comfortable. Now, who can help us figure out which boot to look at? Well, it's the god of grip walk. It's the fountain of all ski technology and a man who apparently reads the Atomic Tech Manual to his kids every night. Well, it's of course Al Morgan from Ski Kit Info. Al, how are you doing, my friend? I am good, thank you. Um, you know, can I be really sad? I read the tech manuals from the brand and because you mentioned the Atomic one, some of it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, anyway. There you, yeah. go. there you have it. Uh, you took a uh, a few weeks away from us um, on holiday, but you're back now, and you are back uh, to talk about ski boots. Yeah. And the biggest caveat that I'm going to put into this before we start is obviously go to your boot fitter, go to your local ski shop, and get fitted by somebody who knows. Uh, don't take our word that the boot will fit. Yeah. Don't listen to us. Go to a boot fitter. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> Uh, sure, but yeah, okay. remember to like and subscribe and comment below. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, right, so we're going to talk about what some brands call all mountain boots. Yeah. We coined before this call the term everyday boots. Yeah. Which I think is a far better way. Now, what does, let's call it everyday boots, what does that mean? This is the boot that you're going to have on your feet for the majority of your skiing. We're not talking about boots with a walk mode. That's that's a bit more special. It's a bit more veering towards touring. And we aren't talking about a really 
snug, super stiff, takes a lot of fitting race style boot. And what's exceedingly confusing as a consumer is some brands call this piece, some brands call this all mountain, some brands have boots that we're going to talk about that might sit between categories. And e even when you and I have been looking at catalogs recently, year on year, brands will move which category the exact same boot is in. So how is anybody supposed to keep track? So yes, I think as an everyday boot, the boot that most people are going to buy for skiing about resort, go and skiing off piste, but they're not going to be touring in it. There you go. Right. That solves that issue. The next part is that we have actually put it into three categories, haven't we, as well? Yeah. Yeah. So, that, yeah. So I'm looking <laughs> at basically width. So when we're talking about ski boots, there's various terms. Flex, I think we'll just get that out of the way first. Yeah. Flex is how stiff a boot is, how much support it has got. It is not standardized. So a 130 boot in a specific model range by one brand can flex differently to a 130 boot in a different model range by the same brand. So, of course it can. Yeah, never mind <laughs> between brands. So it just gives you an indication. If you're going to buy an 80 flex boot, it is going to be easier to flex the cuff forward than if you get a 130 boot. Don't fixate on, oh, I must have a 120, because it depends on the boot. And when you go in a ski shop, the plastic's soft, it flexes more. So you can't, you know, this is why you need an expert boot fair. So that's flex. Out and also, I, I'm just going to add another thing into flex as well, that, that really you don't want to, it, it's not about showing off how, how, how stiff your boots are. Because if you yeah. have a really stiff pair, if you have a 130 and you don't have the strength to ski a 130, it's just going to be rubbish. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. And actually, con con conversely, just to confuse people, you don't want to go too soft and end up folding the boot. I've folded some boots. So that's why I raised that point. But yeah, you want to be able to flex the cuff forward. You want to be able to flex your ankle. That's really, really important for many, many things, not least just comfort and shock absorbency, but actually control of the skis. So yeah, and this again is why an expert boot fitter will help you. So that's flex out the way. Last is a much used term and often little understood. What does last mean? Does the brand measure across, you know, the bony structure behind the toes, the, the met heads, do they measure inside the cuff? Is it a straight line? Is it a diagonal line? Are they inside the cuff, inside the shell? <laughs> are they measuring outside of the shell? Where are they taking that measurement? How does it feel in the heel? You know, if you could get 10 different 98 mil last boots, that's the width in the forefoot, and they could all feel really different because mm -hmm. they've got different instep heights. Things. So it gives us an indication. I like a narrowish boot. So I will generally look at a 98 mil last boot Which is the same for myself. Yes. Yep. But I've got friends who cannot ski in a 98 last boot. They're much better skiers than me, but they have feet like a duck. So they need a much <laughs> wider boot. Yep. But, and they can do that. They can get a wider boot with a performance. So They're not actually ducks, though. Can I just clarify that? Some of the, some of my friends are. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Eclectic, yeah. eclectic social yeah, there you uh, go. circles that you, yeah. uh, you are in. Don't tell my geese friends, though. They're <laughs> very, very jealous. Um, but so, yeah, don't think wide is comfort and narrow is performance. Not the way anymore. You get wide lasted boots. So this 102 mil is generally your wide fitting, 102, 103, that perform phenomenally well. Mm -hmm. So I've categorized that. I've picked a boot that's a 98 mil, which is generally your narrow, a 100 mil, which is generally your medium width, and then a 102 as well. And these are all new models for this season. That's why we're talking about those. But some other boots that I just want to mention in a little bit of boot news, boots, are, you know, we all need boots. And in, in, in the UK, people buy way more boots than skis. So let's talk about it. I, I love boots. Absolutely. <laughs> Here Sorry. we go. Here we go. We could be here for a long time. Yeah, I'll keep it short. Um, <laughs> right. Firstly, before we go on to your honourable mentions, uh, you wanted to very quickly talk ski boot news. Yeah. Uh, it's Which, very short, by the short way, it sounds like the shittest programme in the world. Ski boot news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I am a man that reads 
ski tech manuals. Yeah, well, we can indeed. go a lot worse than this. <laughs> um, it's just a little piece of news. Full tilt. People might know the brand Reichley from years ago. Full tilt have kind of owned that mold series in ski boots. It's been exceptionally popular especially in the freestyle and free ride market, brilliant flexes. The pivot point in it is different to many, many boots, and that works really well if you're going to be landing big hits. Things like that. God, I sound so cool, don't I? <laughs> um, but Full Tilt has sat with K2 for a number of years now, but they brought it into the K2 family. So it's called, logically, it would be called K2 Flex, but if you read it on paper, it's called K2 Full 3X because they're super cool and right a bit different. But yeah, K2 Flex are full tilt boots, essentially. And it is worth mentioning as well, uh, and I do know this from um, the K2 Rep in the UK, Andy, that if you do have full tilt boots and you need parts, they still will be making parts for the full tilt boots yeah. as well. So it's not like it's all just evaporated. Yeah, and just to make it like we all sound like we sound like we know people and are super cool. Andy is amazing and he's a phenomenal ski. I've spent a lot of time oh, yeah. I've been really lucky. But boy, can that man ski. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Full tilt issues, then go and see those guys anyway. Okay, right. That's your that's your ski news done. Ski ski boot news, sorry. Yeah, but people love full tilt, you know. So anyway, yeah, that's absolutely yeah, there we go. it was big news. It was big news on, on forums across the world, genuinely, when when this all happened. It shows you the kind of forums we read. Uh, yeah, it's super yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Honourable mentions. Yeah. Hit me with some of those. There are so many boots on the market. You know, things like Nordica Speed Machines have been really popular in the UK. Technica Mac 1, I'm a big fan of what Technica do with their, their, what they do with their liners are amazing. But we're really kind of looking at new things. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm going to stick to. So... I love the Dalbello Krypton. It's a fantastic boot. I love how it flexes. But Dalbello also, that, you know, that's a cabrio shell. Separate tongue, cuff, and the separate shell, cuff, and tongue in that boot. But they make two-piece constructions where you've got that, that clog, which some people hate the name of, but so that shell around your foot and then a regular cuff. Looks like a downhill boot. They've got a new boot for this year called Veloce. And I hope I'm saying that right. I am northern, so my pronunciation no, is terrible. No, that's correct. Terrible. Um, what is... There's all sorts of things with that boot. I find the fit really, really comfortable. It's that moderate last, that medium last 100 mil. Um, I skied it in the 130. I've done a lot of kind of tinkering with other models, the women's boots in that range and the men's. The thing that's worth noting, they use a kind of memory foam in the tongue. One thing that I love about cabrio shells, you know, for looking also at full tilts because we've spoken about them, they have a brilliant progressive flex you get that out of a three-piece boot it's quite classic so it means there's not too much pressure at the start and then it ramps up as you go forward but people love it for freestyle because you don't get smacked in the shins that mm -hmm. shin bang but that veloce is really interesting it uses memory foam in it and it's just beautifully comfortable on your shins it sounds like a small point but what a difference it makes mm -hmm. and the boot even though i skied it in the 130 but and this comes back to flex it's really easy to flex that 130 boot compared to my own 130s and other boots that I test. Uh, but again, it ramped up. Even though it's a two-piece boot, it still has that really nice progressive flex. But the standout feature is how comfortable it is on your shins. If you suffer from shin bang, have a look at it. There you go. Veloci by Dalbello. Next. Any more honourable mentions? Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I spoke about Nordic and, and, and Speed Machine. Now, often people... Old boys like myself will will hark back to rear entry boot days. Yeah, think of something like a Salomon SX ninety one ninety two, that kind of thing. And, and and people get really into that now. Brands have tried it over the years mm -hmm. to lesser or greater failure, really, because they've never really worked. But Nordica a few seasons ago brought out their HF range. HF stands for hands free. So there's a lever at the back to open it. And that boot works. It skis really well. It's it's quite voluminous. So it's for somebody who's, it's not about skiing performance. I know I, I said you can get wide boots that give you skiing performance. That boot is about comfort and ease of use. You do not have to use your hands to do that boot up when you get into it. And I've done this 
you can do it with this keyboard, but you can do it by lifting your other foot up and kicking the lever down at the back. And it does work. And then you can undo the lever with your ski pole. You don't even have to bend down. So if that's you, if you're that kind of skier, maybe you've got mobility issues, then it works. But some people love a rear entry boot and the HF works. There you go. The Nordica HF, hands-free. Yeah, not new, not new, but... But worth an honourable mention because yeah, it's a little bit yeah. different. Yeah, it is a little bit different. Right. Okay. Can we... I go on to the different last... Okay. Oh, it's so exciting. I don't know. <laughs> God, I'm so sad. Uh, you said it, not me. Um, so, yeah. right. We are going to start the 98 mil last. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that is correct. So, everybody will know Salomon Boots. S-Max has been in their range since 2018. Before that was X-Max, which has been around forever. Um, but for this season, there is no S-Max boot. So they had S Pro, which was your 100 mil last, your wider boots. So they brought in the narrow one, the 98 mil. It's called S Pro Alpha. It's not just the rebadge. It's a new boot. What's really interesting with this boot, for something that is essentially so snug, they've thinned out the plastic above the foot to give you a little bit more room over your instep. If you go for the top end models, then there's a whole host you can do with the tongs, grinding out material, et cetera. Um, and there's, you know, there's special models where you can adapt almost everything on it. But I'm looking at the 120 because that's probably where most people are going to be buying. You know, if you're looking for a performance now lasted boot, you're an upper advanced expert level scale, 120. So the kind of flex area you'll be looking in but they've moved the second buckle. So not the one right over the tootsies, but mm -hmm. over the instep, that's come back. And when you look at the boot, it is so close to the cuff. I thought, hold on, I'm going to get in this boot, flex it, and the second buckle from top on the cuff is going to smack into that, and it gets really, really close. But I've done quite a lot with this boot, and I've never found that an issue. Wow. But what it means is that you don't have that pressure on top of your foot. Now, I have... Um, kind of bone lump on top of both of my feet. Lots of people do, and you can suffer with pressure on that. So I look for liners where there's a cutout in the tongue, come a standard. It works for me. But Salomon have dealt with it in this way. They've thinned the plastic out, moved that cuff buckle back, and actually get better heel hold because of it too. Um, there's a whole host we're going to talk about what they do with their liner and things. But yeah, so that, that Esper Alpha is just, it is worth talking. I think the 120 is around £430. So and that's about on the money for what you're paying for that kind of boot at the moment. So nice. So the Salomon S Pro Alpha S Pro is Alpha. is the one for the 98 mil. We move up two mil. Do we yeah. not to 100 mil? What have you got going on there? I'm going to look at a women's boot here, if that's okay. So I mean, it's absolutely fine with me. Brilliant. Um, and I do ski in women's boots and on women's skis quite a lot. And some of my favourite skis are women's skis. Whole other subject. Women's boots. So head again. Big brand, everybody know it. They do amazing race race boots. They've been really successful in their race category. And they have a new range called Formula. People may know things like head cores, you know, they're kind of free ride boot with a walk mode, but the Formula boots, it's, I love this boot. And I'm going to, so the, the guy that looks after, well, there's a few guys that look after head in the UK, but one of them is particularly funny. And he uses the term spongy plastic. And I love that. <laughs> it comes from their race boots. And they just use some mad mix in this plastic. And it's absolutely beautiful. We spoke about the Veloce, how you get this, this fantastic mm. flex in it. And with the Formula boots, it's just, you get a brilliant, reaction snap out of the boot because of what they're doing with the plastic it's not really stiff into it you know you're thinking oh it's coming from a race boot it might be a bit too much but the formula boots i absolutely love and they do it in two widths actually they do an rs which is narrower loads of brands do this a lot of brands do an lv and an mv for example mm. head do it slightly different or rs is their narrower width than 98 but i'm talking about the standard so the formula 95 for women i think is a really really good option price wise it's a bit less than the salon it's about 390 pounds 90 flex is up there in terms of performance on on ladies boots you know mm. um great value for money there i would say yeah 390 for a 95 flex boot is um yeah pretty good but again just the liner getting into that boot is really nice but the the standout for me was how it skied i just love that reaction in the plastic that they're using and that's key, you know, I want a boot that's going to help me with my skiing. Cool. So the head formula 
Uh, was it 95? 95, yeah. 95. Formula 95 WGW is probably. And, and does that yeah. does that come in a, in a men's boot as well? Yeah, so they go right up to 130s again in that Honda that or 98 cool. last. If you want narrow, look at the RSs. But there you go. I specifically want to mention their medium last boot. And then now we go up to the big boys, the 102 mil uh, last. Um, what have you got lying about there? Lying about here. So <laughs> Atomic has a Hawks range. They do 98 through to 102. Their 102 last, their Magna has sat outside of the tech they used in the other boots for eons. Finally, they brought in the lighter weight construction. And mm -hmm. the, the mad thing about this is that they've made the boot lighter and more powerful. Why didn't they do it ages ago? I have no idea. Well, I know what it is. It's economics, it's numbers, all of these things. But finally, it's got that pro-like construction. The 130 flex in this for the men before was quite soft for 130 flex boot. I think the new one, even though it's a lighter boot, gives you better performance. You get more support out of it. The way that they've constructed the shell, it doesn't bow as much around the foot. Yes, you, you still want a big foot to go in there. If you've got a mm -hmm. 98 last boot, 98 last foot, and you go in, it's not filling the boots. It'll just collapse. It won't, be, it won't work right. If you are, let's say you're that big rugby player, big ankle, big foot, but you're powerful, that Magna 130 is, is a really good option. All of these boots that we've spoken about have a uh, grip walk sole, just, just so everybody knows. I think we'll talk about that in a sec. It's probably worth mentioning soles. Um, but yeah, if you want a big boot, big last, look at that Magna 120. There the you one, go. Well, Atom the 130, really, for the power. Atomic uh, Hawks Magna uh, 130, 120, 130. 130, yeah. Your choice of uh, of wide last. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else to add? I'm sure you do. Uh, Can we talk uh, about soles? <laughs> I, I have none. Um, okay, you sold them. <laughs> yes, um, we can talk about souls, and I know very, where you're going to go with this because you're going to yeah. go and talk about grip walk. I am. Um, if somebody wants a really big history of souls, I want to look <laughs> find out all about them. I'm going to do a bit of self promotion here. Go to skeeterinfo.com. I've got a, a whole article about souls. I know a lot of people that have used it have found it exceptionally useful because it's really confusing. Thankfully, things have been simplified. You get a flat soled boot, your traditional downhill boot. That is pretty much the domain of racing now. Almost all boots for us, the recreational skier, those people that aren't racing and aren't ski tour racing, has a grip walk sole. So this is curved, it's based on a curved touring norm. But there's a hard, flat bit of plastic in the front, hard, flat bit of plastic in the back. So they give you the power and drive of your traditional old flat sole, but they are so much easier to walk about on. And my, oh my, they are much better when you're on top of a table getting a bit leery. Much more grip. <laughs> there we go. I've said it. Very, um, very Yeah, true. it's a grip walk sole, so that's what it's all about. But what is important to note is you cannot buy a grip walk boot and stick it in your 10-year-old ski that has a regular downhill binding. Some skis up until about five years ago, quite a lot of skis actually mm -hmm. had a regular binding. So you must make sure that your binding on your ski is compatible with the boot that you have or buy this season. Absolutely. And again, uh, speak to your ski shop to make sure, take your skis down when you're getting them serviced anyway, before heading down the hill. Yeah. They will be able to tell you. Um, I will link. Oh, should we go to servicing? No, no, <laughs> no. Goodness. <laughs> um, uh, I will link to that article below so people can can um, check out in more detail. Um, obviously, okay. uh, there's lots more detail on uh, Ski Kit Info uh, YouTube channel and on the website. So yeah. um, this is just our slight snapshot of Al's uh, yeah. incredible brain of uh, ski knowledge. Um, just but, just just to reinforce a point yeah none of these boots may work for you when you're watching this just so you know these are standout boots for this season they're very impressive in how they ski and how they're constructed but they may not work for you yep exactly um it is like uh i mean to be honest it's a lot like running shoes or any other type of shoes uh but this is uh even more important um and do go and get yourself fitted with boot fitters um 
in your country because there's loads of really really good boot yeah. fitters around the world yeah who, who will make your ski holidays or ski trips incredibly comfortable yeah little known fact some uk boot fitters help brands develop their boots and train brands own in-house boot fitters absolutely so don't think we're in a relatively flat country that we don't know what we're doing with boot fitting we nail it yeah uh, and a lot of those you know, UK uh, boot fitters also do a lecture in the US, um, as I know we've got a big US audience. Uh, I know they do a lot over yeah. there as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, there you have it. That is all mountain boots or everyday boots, depending on how Every you want to categorize boot. it. Um, uh, again, head to your ski shop. Check out what they've got going on. Uh, this is just what me and Al think are the best. Or well, actually, nothing to do with me. It's actually you, Al. Um, Skikitinfo.com oh. for all of the detailed information. Thank you very much again, Al. You're a legend. Thanks, Todd. Aerosports. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode of the skiing show please do remember to like comment add subscribe down here that would be really helpful and if you are heading out onto the snow then please do stay safe and we'll see you all very soon